Greetings fellow Timon in. This is Timon and Mari here today with another video for you guys. For today's topic I do want to just take a quick look at the friendship point system so you all can see how that works and how it will benefit you. And I want to just show you what the affixing system will be like in this game. Before doing that, those two things however, I do want to piggyback off of yesterday's video. It was brought to my attention after recording that the Commander Jumpstart package is actually tiered, so anyone who hasn't unlocked it yet, it will go up. I don't know if we'll go up past tier 4, but as you can see, it is still insanely worth it. You're paying $31.99 and you're getting 1200 gems, the usual 5 AP potion, and an ultra rare gotcha ticket for either a support or a weapon. So definitely a lot of value here as always, it is worth it. If we actually go to the top up screen, you will see that 1200 crystals is either going to be two of these packs, assuming that you do not have your times two multipliers anymore, and if the game is how it's meant to be, that would be two of these packs are one of the $80 pack. So the fact that you're able to get 1200 for 3199 is amazing. It's literally half off, and then you're getting the free Ultra Rare on top of it to hopefully get something good to add to your arsenal. I do also want to just go ahead and tell you guys the exact number of pulls you would get for buying the maximum package. So right now with the times two bonus, that is 72 pulls approximately. After you exhaust your times two bonuses. Buying the maximum package would yield you, yield you approximately 36 pulls. So you would need to purchase this pack three times or purchase it twice and get this pack and this pack on top of it to make pity. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's roughly $240 to pity without the times two bonuses, which is still really good. Most gotcha games, you're looking at 300 plus to hit pity. So, I'd, I'd take 240 any day over those prices if I'm whaling. Now that that's been covered, we're going to go ahead and look at the friendship point system. So here you see, I have my friends list. As you interact with your friends by greeting them, or receiving their greetings, you're going to get these tiny hearts here. As you see, I currently have 772 of them. So if I just click that, one person has greeted me. Now when you greet all, I'm not sure of the amount, you, if the amount is a flat amount or if you get depending on how many friends you have, but I currently get 150 per greet all. And you see it is on a pretty lengthy cooldown. But if you make sure to, you know, just click that button whenever you go into the game, you're going to get 150 points if your friends list is at maximum. As I stated, I'm not sure if you get the points per friend so try to max out your friends list if you haven't already it's really easy to do so um, there are forums where people are posting their friends codes which is how I maxed mine out day one or you could just go into the friend request tab and there's just a list of suggested players that you can add so you know make sure you take advantage of that because you will want to grind up these friend points and the reason being, if we head over to our shop tab, we're going to have these little guys called friend boxes. You see there are 300 to buy one. Now looking inside the box, there are two items that do stick out to me. Three items, actually. Um, I don't really care about the special mode exchange, or the special mode change, sorry. They're all very fun. The accelerators are nice, because, you know, over time, if you're getting these over and over from farming these boxes which are free you'll be able to skip your trainings which is good the special mode reset reset chip is amazing because you do your special mode you pop a chip you get to do it again yes it's only six crystals but that does add up and any free premium currency is good currency the coup de gras here however is the friend emblem pack if you look at this pack it's going to yield emblems with the character's names. So if I open this Asagi emblem, it says here, special material for crafting an Igawa Asagi exclusive costume. So these are important because as we all know, skins will give you stats. And this is literally giving you a means to craft 
skins. I don't know if it's more than one skin or if it's only one skin, but it is a skin nonetheless. So it's very important to start accumulating your friend points to be able to take advantage of this system and try to get, you know, a skin for your main character. Because this this is RNG, these you you can't choose what you get from the box. It's just random. So you definitely want to want to be getting your friends list your friends list up to maximum, and then accumulating friendship points to spend on these boxes because this is what they're used for to get your hands on these skins. And the materials to craft the skins are also featured directly in the box. We have the nano metal, which you can get two, five, R10. And then we also have fibers, which again, you get two, five, R10. Now, the economics of the whole thing, you see here to get one box, you would pay 300. But to get 10 boxes, you would actually pay 2400. 300 times 10 is 3000. So if you're buying in bulk, you're actually saving 600 friendship points. So I would suggest buy the times 10 box whenever you get up to 2400 saved. That way you're getting the most bang for your friendship points and you're getting the best chance to get your hands on the emblem sooner than later to craft the skin, whatever it may be. Now that that has been covered, I want to go ahead and head to my inventory. And we're going to go to the Magatmas tab. I'm looking at a random Magatma that I've awoken. You see here it has this, this increased damage dealt to demon type enemies by 1.3%. Now if you go ahead and click the reset key, I unfortunately don't have the orbs right now, I have not been getting lucky with my daily today. It's half off, but they're just not giving me the orbs. But what you would essentially do is you would highlight this, and you see it shows up here. It's only 1000 to reset it. You would click the reset key if I had the two to do so, and then it would literally re-roll this roll. So it could come out worse, it could come out better, and then in the areas between the two rolls, like the first roll will be here, the second one will be about here, and then you'll see an arrow here saying confirm or confirm here. So whichever one you decide to keep, just click the arrow, and then it will go to that affix. Whether the original one is better or if the new one is better, then you would just change it. And that can be unlocked for each of these four other slots. So this is a good way to kind of customize your timing into your liking. This also is a great way to make any character viable regardless of tier list. Like personally, like I think every character in this game is great. I have heard rumblings that Renko is a bit OP and that Morisaki is a bit powerful. But with this system, anyone could be great because you're literally, over time, you're gonna be swimming in these orbs when you're clearing hard mode out. And you're going to be able to customize your timing and to your liking to do whatever you want. Like, I've seen roles such as increases damage to all enemy types, increases damage to humans, increases damage to demons. So, you can literally make this what you want as long as you're willing to keep rolling. It's just like, you know, playing Diablo, where you roll on stats and you get that one perfect roll and you're like, yes, I did it, my character is broken now. So, keep in mind, you know, that this system is available to you. And as you get your Magatmas leveled up, I would suggest investing heavily into it. I wouldn't do it for, say, like, rare Magatmas or normals. But when you start to get your hands on the super rare Magatmas, like you see, I've been focusing critical and power ones exclusively. Definitely take the time and invest into them. Because as of right now, they're the most powerful ones that you can get. And they're easily farmed from time attack. So as long as you can at least clear normal, they are in the drop pool. And they're pretty common. And with that, that does cover what I wanted to discuss on the information front. I do have kind of a PSA to give everyone if we go to the quest tab and hit up time attack. I was reading the news about this game and it's been, you know, brought, brought to my attention that people are cheating time attack somehow. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know if it's a cheat tool or what have you. But as you can see here, we have this Yuki Kaze, she's level 17, and she's first place for hard mode on chapter 1. But if you look at her gear, this, this just doesn't add up. Like, she's got a level 4 weapon, and yeah, she's got major, but her other supporters are literally level 1 with no dupes. So there's really no way she's going to be outputting the damage to 
pummel hard mode in what was it a minute and 30 seconds if we go over the chapter 3 there are actually good examples of probably people who are legitimate like here we have this level 71 Asagi this is someone who I would believe has cleared it with their legitimate loadout they have they have Homura at with three dupes they have a Renka with five dupes so their critical rate coming from that Renka is absurd Homura is upping their damage and then um, Takan here is just an amazing AoE and CC CC supporter on the top of that, they have their weapons both level 60, and all of their Magatmas are super rare. So these are the type of people who are going to be burning through hard mode like it's nothing. And you see here, it took that player 2 minutes and 53 seconds. When we scroll up, you have this Sakura here. Their weapon is nice, yes, but their supporters just are not adding up. There's no way, like... These, this is literally healing over time for this supporter. I'm not sure what this one does. And this goes in your training facility. And I believe she ups um, experience or skill points. I am not, don't remember which one, but it is one of those two. So there's no way that this person has legitimately cleared hard mode faster than a level 71 geared whale Asagi. So just, you know, keep, keep, keep in mind that these times are, are funky right now don't feel like you, you know you're bad at the game or don't feel discouraged or like you're behind because some of these people aren't even supposed to be in this space so just take your time level up you'll eventually be able to clear hard mode and get your your face on the rankings it's, it's 100 percent possible even as a free-to-play because you're going to be getting the game is going to be rewarding you with gems and tickets monthly with the battle pass so just relax take a deep breath Realize some people are ruining it for everyone else by cheating, and the devs are taking care of it. They did say that they are cleaning the leaderboards and removing the people who are suspicious. So, I just wanted to get that PSA out there in case someone, you know, looked at the time attack and screamed, This is pay to win! It's it, that A lot of those scores aren't legitimate, and just, you know, relax and enjoy the game. So that does cover everything I wanted to say today. As always, if I was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out this channel. And with that, I wish you all a good night, and I wish you all great luck with your gotcha. Take care.